Students, I'm super excited. I have a special guest today. This is Dr. Oja coming all the way from New York, and we can't wait to talk about everything in the world of science, astronomy, and you name it. So Dr. O, thank you so much for giving us the time today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> I, I am too. I kind of stalked you on LinkedIn after we saw a Mars rover documentary, and my students, we were really getting into it. And I was like, what if we, what if we looked up this guy and maybe I could connect with them? Who knows, you know? And they're, they were kind of shocked at how the world just kind of opens up through things like LinkedIn and that. So again, thanks for uh, not ignoring me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, very excited to talk to students virtually. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. All right, so number one, uh, Dr. Oja, we just love to know, like officially, what is your current like career or job? And through that, we were just curious, like, what does a day in the life look like in that career or job for you? Yeah, so currently I am um, a professor at Rutgers. So I'm an assistant professor at Rutgers. I have been, so Rutgers is in New Jersey. I live in New York. Uh, and so basically um, I teach college students sometimes. Um, in my class right now, there are about 80 students taking kind of very like intro level uh, class about what planets are, what moons are, you know, um, not only talking about the, the planets and the moons of our solar system, but also planets of other system, right? So part of my job is teaching at Rutgers to undergraduates. And also I have a couple of uh, PhD students, so students who are trying to get their doctorate. Um, and then, uh, so that's the teaching part, but the and that that's about, you know, I would say maybe 20% of my day to day life, but most of my time is devoted to doing research. And so there are various different things that I am interested in. And, and uh, almost 80% of the time, I'm either writing equations on my paper, piece of paper, or I'm working in front of my computer. I have these like five different screens here that you guys cannot see. Um, yeah, and I look at a lot of data that we have coming from different planets and just trying to make a sense of sense of the universe. Oh, that's awesome. So a couple questions to stem off from there. For your specific research, is there a general big question you're trying to ask or are there a bunch of little ones you're interested in? Just curious on what specific area that excites you. Yeah, I think the overarching, kind of like the big picture, right? I mean, if you have the, a very big umbrella and inside that big umbrella, if you have smaller umbrellas, right? So the really the big umbrella is like, you know, why are planets the way they are, you know? And so if you look at Mars versus Earth versus Venus versus some of the gas giants like Jupiter or Saturn, they are radically different from each other. And so life evolves and we can see that on Earth, right? And so similarly, as life evolves, planets also evolve. And so what and how do those planets evolve and what can they tell us about our own future is kind of like the big, big umbrella, right? Now inside their, that big umbrella, there are smaller umbrellas, like, you know, uh, is there water on Mars? Or, you know, are there other planets in other systems that may have water that could be habitable, right? Or smaller umbre umbrellas like, you know, is Earth the only place where we have earthquakes? Are there other places where there might be moon quakes or Mars quakes or Venus quakes? You know, so there's a lot of different stuff, but, you know, trying to really understand why planets are so different and similar in some ways. Yeah, no, fascinating. So when you are looking at your screens and equations in that, what kind of math are we talking? Are we talking algebra? Is this calculus? Is this a lot of geometry and angles? Or is it a, a huge mix of a variety? Just curious, because I'm pretty ignorant to the, the whole industry. So any any info on that? Yeah, I think like, you know, a lot of people say, when am I ever going to use geometry or algebra, right? I can tell you that we use geometry and algebra a lot all the time. But on top of algebra and geometry or trigonometry, uh, we use a lot of higher higher level mathematics, like calculus, for example, and even when you take calc, for example, right, some of the students might be taking calculus right now or in a couple of years, you know, there's multiple levels of calculus and you can get all the way to differential equations and, you know, linear algebra. So, yeah, depending on the problem that we're trying to solve, we could be using simple as, you know, y equals mx plus b, simple linear equation that some of the students may be familiar with, 
or you could be using really complicated equations that takes hours to solve sometimes. I love it. Well, thank you for that insight. As far as you looking for these answers and doing research, is this something that's more solitary, like you working by yourself, or do you tend to work with the team? How, what's the dynamic with that in your research? So in my research, um, I'm pretty, um, I guess, isolated in the sense that, you know, uh, I do work with a lot of people, but it's not like I see them day to day, right? I mean, they're all, they're scattered all around the world. I have, you know, uh, colleagues and friends who work, you know, we work together, but they're, you know, they might be in Arizona, they might be in Louisiana, they might be in France, some of my friends are in Germany, so we're all over. We work together, but, you know, um, you know, we're, we're in very different places. Yeah, very cool. And I think uh, you guys probably being used to that, the whole thing with COVID and virtual probably wasn't that big of a scare because you were so used to collaborating far away from each other already. Is that safe to say? Um, in a way, yeah, in a way. But, you know, I live in New York, but, um, you know, and seeing the entire city, right? I mean, the, the liveliest, the busiest city right. basically shut down was a very different. But um, yeah. on a day to day, like work, yeah. I would say. <laughs> for you, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for the insight with that. One last question about research, and then I'd love to get into just from high school. How did you end up uh, to this great role that uh, I find fascinating in that? Uh, but from <laughs> the one last question I guess I had was, if you get your data in that, forgive me. Now, again, from an outsider that doesn't know much, I think a lot of people turn to like NASA and government-owned telescopes in that. Is, is that where a lot of your official outer space data comes from? Is that something that you can get yourself through your university? Just curious where this data naturally comes from for you to work with. Yeah, so again, like it depends on the kind of like the work that you're trying to do, right? Uh, um, and so a lot of our data does come from, um, from NASA. And so, for example, every Mars rover that you may have heard of or every Mars satellite you know, that you may be talking about, uh, those were funded by taxpayers' money, right? And so those were launched by NASA, they were controlled by NASA and everything, but because they're tax paid, uh, I mean, because they were funded by taxpayers, every single byte of data that we collect from Mars has to be released to the public. Uh, oh. Everyone, right? Not just Americans, not just North Americans, everyone in the world has access to every single byte of data we have ever collected from outer space. Oh, that's and super so, cool. Yeah, so it's for, you know, it's not it's not like I have like, you know, this great contact at NASA or anything. Basically, <laughs> anyone can utilize data, right? And um, I actually have a lot of uh, high school students right now working with me, analyzing those data, right? And so it's a little bit of a tricky thing about, okay, how do I access the data? But, you know, once you get over that, it's free, it's available to everyone. And on top of NASA, there's, you know, uh, data that we have from just looking at rocks here on Earth. Right? Geology is a great tool. And, you know, uh, understanding our own backyard helps us understand other planets like Venus or Mars or Mercury. So there's geological data from our own backyard. And then there's the telescopic data, right, without having to do much with NASA. I mean, you can... Even students, for example, some of the students might have telescopes in their house and they can use that telescope to you know, collect their own data. So there's multiple ways of um, you know, having that data. Oh, awesome. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me in on that. I appreciate that. It's good to know. And it makes sense. If the public pays for it, it's now public knowledge and data. That makes total sense. All right. So to, to kind of go back on memory lane a little bit, um, you were in high school. How did, what was the journey to getting to where you are now was it something you always knew or was it just it kind of naturally happened and uh just curious we love to walk in other people's shoes to see how they came to the place where they find themselves fulfilled with their current position yeah i think uh i was obsessed with the idea of time travel uh yeah. growing up uh like seventh eighth grade and so um there were two things that I really wanted to do in my life. One was invent time machine, time travel, and second was uh, playing a band. And I was doing both at the same time. I mean, I was playing in a band at the, you know, around this time when I was reading great books like The Brief History of Time, you know, amazing book. If, if any of the students are interested in physics or universe or black holes or wormholes, 
uh, The Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking is a great yeah. book. So, and so I was reading that book, yeah. And, um, you know, I was, I graduated high school and I thought I was not going to go to college. Uh, I was playing with a band and I was very happy with that. I wanted to be a rock and roller. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we were not very good, right? So <laughs> uh, I was very poor <laughs> because I was playing in a band that was not very good. So I decided to go to school. Uh, and so I went to college and I studied physics for a little while. Uh, because I wanted to really think about this this idea of time travel. And then uh, I think within a semester of being in physics, or maybe a year, uh, I kind of realized that, you know, time travel is really not going to be something that I will do in my lifetime. So what is the next best thing that I can do with my life? And so if it's not time travel, I'm going to look for aliens, right? And so I was like, all right, I'm going to look for aliens. Well, how do I do that? Well, you got to study astronomy, you got to study planets, you got to know geology of the Earth, right? So all this kind of stuff. And so that led me into a path of studying planets. Um, and that that field of studying planets and stars, it's called planetary science. So you're studying different planets. And so that's how I, um, that's kind of like the memory lane that led me towards, um, towards planetary science. And here I am 17 years later. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I, uh, I too am a musician that was never involved with very uh, well-known bands. And I too had to admit that I was never going to be a professional rock star. So <laughs> you can agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tough pill to swallow, but I do say, and maybe you would agree, maybe not uh, the world of music and playing that creativity, I think is a transferable skill into problem solving and I don't know, thoughts in that in any, any type of area or work. So I think music's a beautiful thing, even if it's not a full-time job, you know? Oh, absolutely. Especially if you make your own music, right? I mean, there's some who like to cover songs from other people and there are people who actually write their own songs. And in science, essentially, that's what you're doing. You have to be creative and ask a question that no one has asked before. That's very much like writing a song that no one has written before, right? And so there's a lot of good parallels between how we go on about music, right? There's rhythm, there's structure, there's formulas, right? And in science, a lot of those same terms and skills are transferable so yeah there's beautiful harmony between the two i love it well said well said well we want to respect your time but i did have one final question uh, our high schoolers are going to be listening to this and curious are there any skills that you found that could be soft skills you know the whatever the hard skills they call them that you found have benefited you or others uh, in your path to where you are now? Is there anything that stands out, everyday skills, skills in school that just you feel like, you know what, this actually was a really good benefit for me and you might benefit from it too? Yeah, I think taking any sort of class that, you know, kind of improves your creative thinking because I think, uh, you know, uh, creativity, no matter what kind of, what line of work you're in is is extremely important. I mean, the most influential people, right? I mean, regardless of whether it's science or, you know, com computation or, you know, social media or whatever, I mean, creativity is one of the most important thing. And so, you know, taking arts classes, you know, music classes, I think those things are really important. Now, there, if there are students that are like really, really like gun ho about it, all right, I'm gonna go in this field. But I think computation, right? Knowing how to code, I think the future is mostly coding, right? Uh, a lot of jobs are going to have a coding aspect. And so knowing how to code from an early age gives you a like way better, um, you know, edge over other applicants. So I would say, you know, take classes that sort of improves your creative thinking, but also classes that may improve your coding skills, because I think that's going to be important in the future. Thank you for that insight. Well said. And yeah, I, I better get on coding because I might become a dinosaur. I'm uh, I still got plenty of time left in my field. I'm only almost 40. So I better get on that, man. I'm going to be obsolete soon. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All it's right. Not terrible, but if you're, if you're serious about going into science or engineering or any of these fields, then you, you know, um, that's something that you might want to have. No, absolutely. No, I think, thank you for that. Well, Dr. Ojo, we can't thank you enough. You let us in a little bit into your daily life in that and your story. Love it. Inspiring as well. So on so many different levels and so many different avenues, I think you're really connecting with our students and we can't thank you enough for the opportunity to, to simply do that. So uh, with, okay. the, with that being said, we just want to officially thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. It was, uh, it was, it was great. <laughs>